Okay guys, um, we're here at the edge of a nature reserve on NUS campus. Uh, what we're going to do this morning is simply to uh, demonstrate the use of a soil auger to take a, a soil sample. So we'll just look around first. We can see the, the main reserve is in front of us. Um, we're surrounded by trees. Now, basic safety. This is a reasonably good place. We look up there, there's a road um, on three sides and behind us is a building, incidentally with a very good cafe. Um, basic safety, this is a shady area, might be mosquito, so make sure you have mosquito repellent on you. Okay, right, let's now look for a site and as we walk through I can see here that there's some uh, plenty of vegetation I'm going to probably take um, a sample in this area where there's relatively little vegetation but also um, it's not too disturbed if I were to take a sample here where there's been a path recently built it could be that the sample itself will be quite man-made. One, one would have lots of mixed soil there and it might not show us what the natural deposition of the soils would be. Okay, so let's just sit down here. Okay, so soil augers typically come in three parts. You have the handle, you have the blade or the actual auger itself, and you have the locking uh, bar to put them together. So I will now just put them together. Good. Okay, okay, so uh, where are we? This goes on there like that. So I've put the locking bar on the handle end, it can go either way, and you can see that there is a hole and a lug. These fit together and such that the lug goes into the handle, like that. The locking bar now moves down between them, like that, and locks such that the small sighting lug is actually engaged. So now the thing is fixed, it's, it's rigid, which is what's required. Okay, right. The Next thing we do as scientists is we record what it is we're going to do. And in fact, I'll just use the date. Uh, today is the 12th. Yes, it's the 12th today of March. Ding. Okay, typically I'll record who I'm with, 
so it's from man and myself. The weather is uh, reasonably fine, it's dry, um, cloudy, but crucially not wet. Time is about 11 a.m. And it's worth noting that yesterday um, we had heavy rain. This is quite important because it's actually soil. Okay, I won't continue uh, showing you my notes as it was, uh, it was obvious. Um, I'm going to photograph the area and then I'm going to draw the area uh, just as a sketch and solve it. Okay. So the next thing I'll do is simply to take photographs. I'm now going to concentrate on the site that I'm using, which you'll recall is this site here, which is uh, not too much vegetation, relatively undisturbed. As you can see, my soil auger is now uh, completely assembled. So what I'm going to do, really, is we always do clear away the debris, get frogs and the other things from the surface. It's actually the soil that we want to solve. Now, effectively what we're going to do is screw this soil auger into the soil. Now, please watch your backs, be careful. So, you can probably see that my legs are slightly apart and my back is straight and I'm holding the soil order like this. Okay, so just raise your shoulders, press down, and a half turn. Keep pressing down until the auger bites. And now, actually, you can see that I'm not touching the auger at all. Uh, it's in there already, and if we look underneath, you can see where the screw is entering the ground, and it's now going round as we screw. So I shall continue and try to focus on the screw itself. Try not to wave the auger around because if you do that then actually um, the, uh, the hole will be destroyed. I'm going to keep the focus on the screw itself and I'm simply going to continue screwing the auger into the ground. Now obviously I don't want to wave the auger around because that will widen the hole too much. So I'm just going to carry on and be quiet and you can watch. Again, watch your back. Keep your weight above it. And you can see now that the auger is pretty much where it needs to be. I'm going to give it a couple more turns so that um, it can actually be removed. Okay, as you can see now it's pretty firmly uh, where it needs to be. So now that thread is loaded with soil. This is the interesting part. It's very easy to injure yourself at this point, so please be careful. There are two or three ways of doing this. What you must not do is to bend your back like this and pull. You will hurt your back. Bend your knees with your 
the auger actually in your elbows. Using your knees, gently try to pull up. Now, with some soils it will come out, with others it might not. This is uh, proving to be more difficult. So what we'll do instead is give a reverse turn and we will try again. You can see it's still um, the screw, the, the screw head is still where it needs to be. Right. Okay, I'm now going to move the auger slightly because the soil we need is in the thread, so it's fine. And I'll try again. And okay, it's now coming. So I'm going to very carefully keeping you're lifting from your knees, not from your back. Gently up, and if we're fortunate, you will see that the auger is loaded with soil. Now, looking at this, you can see the threads here, and the soil we want is there. Now, clearly you can measure from the top of the thread down to the bottom of the thread to establish what depth you're interested in. Now, with this type of device, you can actually take a number of samples from different depths from the one, uh, a number of subsamples from the main sample. Or you can simply um, gather all the soil into one bag and go from there. And you can see that we also have a bit of biological sampling here, and we have a worm that we've disturbed in the middle of his lunch. Okay, I think that um, that's probably all we need to do. Um, we will now use a plastic bag to load in the soil and go from there. What I will do here now is clean the auger off and uh, uh, just sort out the sampling site as we leave it as much as we can as we found it. Okay, so first of all with the auger, this is reasonable soil. There's nothing, there's no uh, problems with it. So I'm simply going to release it and you can see how this looks. I'm not going to do the soil test on it. But you can see that it's quite a clay soil. You can see the way it's breaking. You'll remember the soil rolling test. Um, now we're not actually taking this sample. But again you can see uh, just the fact that it's this well packed tells you there's a lot of clay in it. And of course, when you finish using any equipment, including soil augers, you just clean off the soil like that. Now, this is a, a fairly uh, reasonable auger. Um, these blades are not sharp, but nonetheless, be aware that they are nonetheless still blades. I'm going to place that down there. And now, uh, I'm just going to cover that back up. So, our sampling site is now mostly as we found it. at the site, take the sample and then break the auger down again before you leave for transport away from the site. Okay, bye bye. That's all folks.